inside the pool room in the early morning hours of the third day of June, 1961? No. Your witness. Had others operate the pool room for you on occasion? Occasionally. Had Mr. Gideon worked for you? It's never on the payroll. But he operated it sometimes, didn't he? Well, occasionally. The dollar and a half Mr. Gideon paid you for taking him downtown that night, exactly how did he pay you that? With six quarters. And did he say anything to you about what you should answer if anyone asked whether you'd seen him that night? He said if anybody asked, I hadn't seen him. Your witness. Mr. Pike, when Mr. Gideon got in your cab, what was his condition as to sobriety? What's that? Oh, uh, was he drunk or sober? He was sober. Do you have any wine on him? No, sir. Any beer? No, sir. Any Coca-Cola? No, sir. Did his pockets bulge? No, sir. Well, now, we have just heard what Mr. Gideon said that if anybody asked, you hadn't seen him. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now tell me, had you ever had Mr. Gideon in your cab before? Yes, sir. And had he ever said that same thing to you? If anybody asked, you hadn't seen him. Yes, sir. Has he ever said why? Yes, sir. Well, tell the court what he said to you on those occasions. Well, uh... Mr. Gideon has had wife trouble, a woman trouble on occasion. Well, haven't we all? And what he said before was he didn't want anybody knowing his personal business. And that's why he didn't want you to let on that you'd seen him. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's all. You may step down, Mr. Pike. Thank you. Uh, we call Clarence Earl Gideon to the stand. Put your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Seated. Mr. Gideon, on the morning of June 3rd, 1961, did you break and enter the Bay Harbor pool room? No, sir. What was the purpose of your taking a taxi cab into town? Get me another drink. I just robbed a bar room. I wouldn't have done that. Where'd you get the money you had on you? Gambling. Oh. What kind of games did you play? Mostly rummy, that and poker. Mm -hmm. What kind of stakes did you play for? Nickel, diamond, quarter. Did you ever gamble with Lester Wade? Sure, gamble with all those boys. Ask them. Do you have any wine on you? I don't drink wine. Any beer? No. Any Coca-Cola? No. Oh, uh, one last thing. Mr. Stafford says that you used to operate the pool room for him on occasion. Is that right? Yes, sir, I did. How would you let yourself in for that purpose? I had a set of keys for that purpose. What do you say to this charge you broken in at the Bay Harbor pool room? Not guilty of it. Know nothing about it. You had over twenty-five dollars in coins on you that morning when they arrested you, didn't you, Mr. Gideon? Why did you have all that money in coins? 
I bet as much as a hundred dollars in my pockets and coins. Wow. Ever run a poker game? You would carry one hundred dollars in coins around with you for days at a time? Yes, sir. Excuse me for saying that, Miss Curtis, but I sure wouldn't leave in the room in the Bay Harbor Hotel. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Yes, five times, including this one. Lester Wade. Lester Wade. This uh, probationer has been out at the dance drinking beer. He comes back, maybe a little dry. And he walks up to stand outside the pool hall for an hour and a half waiting for it to open. He could walk two blocks home and sleep for 90 minutes or get a beer out of his icebox. But no, he'd rather just stand right there on that corner walking back and forth for 90 minutes looking in the window and being thirsty and now so he says looking in the window he sees clarence earl giddy only he does a very peculiar thing he doesn't call the police he doesn't notify the owner he just walks up the corner and he walks back. Why? I know why. And so do you. The beer had run out at midnight at Apalachicola and Lester Wade and his friends were still thirsty. So what happened to the beer, the wine, and the Coca-Colas? I'll tell you what happened to them. They left out of there in that old model Chevrolet. Now, why was Wade standing on that corner walking back and forth? I'll give you the answer. He was the lookout. What about Gideon? He comes out of his hotel. He goes to the telephone booth. He calls a taxi cab. It picks him up and takes him into town. Wade, standing guard, sees him. And now, when the police happen by, here's the perfect answer for Wade. He names Gideon. Twenty-five dollars worth of change. That's a lot to carry in your pocket. But Mr. Gideon had one hundred dollars worth of change in his pocket. Do you believe that? Do you believe that other story you just heard? Lester Wade's not on trial here. There's been no evidence of any animosity by Wade toward Gideon. There's been no evidence that Wade and his friends took that beer and wine. You have to go on the evidence in the case, not on speculation. You have to rely on the facts and not on what some lawyer like Mr. Turner would like you to believe. Add your verdict to the bailiff.
then it will rise.